So, uh, so let's start with a silent prayer and gratitude to the universe, uh, to God and uh, to the parents and uh, friends we, who have helped us over the years. So, uh, yes, so my goal is to create 1 million chess players worldwide and the Chess Master is a, is a, is a program which, will, uh, which I have launched for this purpose. Um, who should enroll for this program? This program is for beginners who want to learn chess, this magnificent game, uh, which is, which is uh, you know, the, the benefits of chess, I will tell you later, but this is a program for beginners. And if, even if you have a little, bit, little knowledge of chess, you, you have to unlearn yourself. I will help you uh, to learn chess from ground up. All right, so chess helps you and your child to evolve as a better person. Children of age seven, or plus can enroll into the program. And uh, I mean, the, as I told you before, there's no age bar for this program. I mean, so, someone who, who is seven plus to 90 or 100 can enroll for this program. There's no age bar. Anybody with any uh, age group can enjoy chess and learn chess at any point in time, provided they are able to grasp the ideas. And uh, at any level of, uh, of playing strength can enjoy this wonderful game. And uh, that is the beauty of chess. I advise parents to accompany the child aged between seven to 12, uh, because uh, you know, sometimes yeah, there's, there should be an assistance to, for uh, people who are, or children who cannot uh, do certain things together, because I'll be giving them assignments. I'll be uh, telling them what to do uh, after, a, after a session, after a lecture. And uh, I want someone who is responsible to handle uh, the assignments as well. So 13 plus uh, st uh, students or children can attend without uh, parental assistance. So why should you learn chess? No matter how old you are and what you do in life, chess is an essential life skill. Everyone should learn it. I would say it is a life skill because chess, learning chess and the, and the lessons that you learn from chess will be with you for a lifetime. You can, you can, uh, you know, uh, you, you can be much smarter and you it will the life lessons will can be applied even if you're a professional or if you if you uh, if you enter uh, a business or if you become an uh, you know decide to become an entrepreneur it is going to help you uh, in your entire life so uh, as I told you before, let's begin with a clean slate, even if you know a little bit about chess, because a little knowledge is going to be uh, harmful. So we should learn chess from ground up, even if you know a little bit about chess, because um, if you don't understand the complete rules and regulation of the game, it would be uh, you know impossible to enjoy chess and uh, uh, get the benefit out of it. So for example, if you are playing cricket and if you don't understand the, uh, the, all the rules of cricket, you won't enjoy the game. You know, you'll, with the half knowledge, you cannot, you cannot enjoy it. So this is my father and myself, and uh, I'm going to uh, use this opportunity to thank him because uh, many years ago, he introduced me to chess. And uh, I'm, I'm forever uh, uh, gratitude to him and because of which I would be, uh, I'm able to start this program and it has been a passion for me for the past 35 years. So uh, thanks to him. And uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the history of chess. I mean, before starting this program, um, we should understand how chess uh, came into being and how uh, it became popular over the years. So H.J.R. Murray uh, is a chess historian. He has uh, written a book called The History of Chess in 1913 um, in Oxford publications many years ago. And in that book, he categorically stated that uh, the modern chess was invented in the sixth century in India. And it was uh, derived from an earlier game called Chaduranka. So uh, I, I believe that chess was there in different format uh, much before the modern chess was invented. Uh, it was invented in India and it, it traveled to 
uh, uh, Arabia in Persia and from there to Arabia and from there to Europe. And now uh, Europe has become the capital of chess, especially Spain and uh, the modern chess was formed from there. So uh, there is another uh, uh, story to it. Uh, it is based on mythology. Uh, the, the king of uh, Lanka, Ravana, uh, Ravana's wife, Mandodri, actually invented chess. There's a, there's a, a story related to that. Uh, Ravana was always, uh, uh, you know, uh, busy with his battles and his wars. Um, so uh, Mandodri was getting bored. So she invented this war game to engage herself in chess and uh, later she even defeated uh, Ravana. There's a story regarding that. So if you believe that story, then chess is uh, more than 5,000 years old if you believe in mythology. So reasons why you should, uh, your child should uh, play and learn chess. Chess improves IQ. It has been proven and it makes your child uh, a smarter person. It is advised that you learn chess in, at, at a very young age, but uh, there's no age bar to learn chess. I, I learned chess at the age of seven, and uh, I think that is a pretty much the age where we should uh, start learning chess, six, seven, uh, and you know, you you get to get curious, and you uh, the learning curve is much more much lesser. Uh, it builds confidence and patience. It improves uh, concentration and memory. It improves language skills. It teaches planning and foresight. Enhances creativity, and above all, it helps you to accept defeat with dignity to win another day. That is uh, one uh, virtue which I like about chess because you cannot win all the time uh, in any sport or in life in general. You have to learn to accept uh, defeat sometimes so that we can learn from it and uh, be a winner later. Those who have uh, been winner in life has always, has always been, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, faced faced uh, defeat and difficulty because they learned from it and they became successful later on. If you read any story, they've, uh, uh, you know, encountered difficulties earlier in life to win uh, later on uh, to become a much more uh, successful person. So chess is a life skill. I believe that chess is a life skill. So you can find a chess board in ho at the home of uh, and office of top CEOs, world leaders, movie stars, uh, sports personalities, army generals, politicians, and influencers. These are some of the photos. Uh, this is Magnus Carlsen, uh, the current world champion playing uh, Bill Gates. And this is uh, Barack Obama, the former American president playing a uh, casual game. This is... Uh, uh, the uh, famous printer Hussein Bolt. This is Amir, our own Amir Khan playing Vishwanath Anand. This is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the movie star playing uh, the former world champion uh, Gary Kasparov. So chess is uh, a life skill. Uh, every famous personality uh, has got a chess board at home and they practice chess to, to, be, uh, to become much more smarter and uh, sharper in life. So there are health benefits uh, to chess as well. Uh, you know, chess helps to prevent Alzheimer's disease. It is proven that, you know, chess exercises exercise both sides of the brain. So it prevents uh, the slowdown of brain cells or uh, the destruction of brain cells, thus preventing Alzheimer's. It grows uh, dentists in the brain. Dentists are antennas. Uh, and uh, more antennas you have in your brain, more, uh, more smarter you will become. Uh, it increases creativity, as I told you before, and concentration. It improves reading skills and language skills. So it, it helps in the academics of the child as well. Uh, uh, it, it improves pattern matching. It improves uh, uh, problem solving skills. Uh, it improves recovery from stroke and disability. So these are some of the health benefits of chess, uh, learning chess, actually. And you can learn uh, at any point in time. So let us look at the rating levels and rating charts. You must have uh, heard about uh, chess rating. So the ratings start with uh, the, you know, uh, when I started playing chess, it start, started with 2,200. Now it has come down to 1,000. Um, 1,000 to 1,400 uh, is a class E player. Class 200 to 400 is class D player. 400 to 600 is class C, class B, class A. 
after 2000 ELO, you can call yourself an expert level player until 2300 ELO rating. So ELO rating is given by uh, the, the chess, uh, World Chess Organization called FIDE. And uh, it, it depends on uh, various criteria. You have to play rated tournaments and defeat rated players. Uh, there, there are uh, rules regarding that. And uh, it, they will allocate you rating based on your performance. So 2200 to 2300 is a national masters and candidate masters. Uh, 2300 to 2000 yellow, 2400 yellow strength is a FID masters. 2400 to 600 is grand masters, international masters, etc. 2600 to 2800 is world championship contender. So current world champion uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen has got a rating of 2850 plus. So uh, this is how uh, the world uh, the top nations perform in chess. Uh, Russia is number one, followed by United States of America, then China, and then India. India is at number four. Uh, India has got uh, 64 GMs and uh, 114 IMs and a total of 408 title players and many, many, many rated players. When I started out, uh, um, we had only uh, Vishwanandan Anand. Uh, so I started my journey uh, of chess in back back in you know 1985 86 when my father presented me with a book of uh, world championship uh, a match between Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov of 1985 86. So I received that book in 1987 or something like that. That is the same year um, Vishwanathan Anand uh, became world junior champion and a grandmaster, and from there this chess revolution started in India. So about me, a little bit about me, I'm an engineer and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a digital consultant, chess trainer and digital chess coach. Chess is a passion and a hobby for me. But as a profession, a professional, I'm an engineer and uh, I run my own company. Uh, I'm a, I run a digital marketing agency in Kochi and Bangalore along with my business partner and dear friend Sayed. Uh, prior to that, I was working in various roles. Yeah, so I lost my connection uh, here. Uh, okay, let's restart. So although I had to stop playing competitive chess due to my professional commitments, my passion for chess is still alive. I follow the uh, master games and you know, I make sure that I study chess at least one hour per day and I follow the latest updates in the chess world. Um, so I started competitive chess back in 91 and I've played many state, national, international tournaments over the years. And uh, I learned chess all by myself. I didn't have a coach, so I didn't want. I don't want you to go through the same grinding phase. Um, so my st first chess rating was two zero seven eight, and I achieved it in back in two thousand five, and I maintained it maintained uh, two thousand plus rating until uh, two thousand eighteen, where I lost a lot of yellow points, and I, I can't play a lot of tournaments because of my professional commitment. So this is my FID card. My current rating is to 1975, same as my birth year. So uh, since I have not played any tournament since then, it has not improved. But I play uh, Blitz chess every day on uh, you know various platforms to keep myself updated. Uh, so I get immense pleasure in training and helping children and youngsters to improve their game. So I have been learning chess uh, for the past 30 or more years. So I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, accumulated immense uh, knowledge in chess because I, I was a theoretician. I used to learn informators uh, during those times. There were no computers. So I, I, I used to subscribe to informators and there was a chess magazine called Chessmate from Chennai. I used to, uh, uh, you know, subscribe to that. There, is, there was a magazine called New in Chess. I used to study that in, intensively. So uh, although I had a busy, I have a busy schedule. I find time to give chess lessons to school children in the schools for the sheer joy, joy of sharing my knowledge. Uh, so I have given training and consultation to many players. So in 2000, uh, uh, back in 2006, before I went to Singapore, I was uh, helping uh, Grandmaster Gopal uh, before he he became Grandmaster. Uh, so under my uh, uh, when I was uh, uh, you know with him. He became an international master and then a grandmaster. And then uh, national and state champion like uh, Sanjay S. Pillai, he achieved uh, national, he uh, you know, won the state youth chess championship last year. And also in the previous year, he won the state uh, junior chess championship under my uh, tutelage. Uh, 
and uh, Shruti Krishnan and Rehna Fatima, all my students. These are some of my students and uh, I'm playing chess tournament here. Uh, this, this is an earlier photo. This was taken in 2015-16 and this is uh, my, me taking classes classes in a, a chess workshop in a, in, a, in a school in Kochi. So that's about me. So let us hear uh, 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 from my student Sanjay S. Pillai. Uh, so yes. Kerala State Junior so Chess Champion hear and him. also former Kerala State Rapid Chess Champion. I had the good fortune to work with Mr. Sumit Balan for quite some time. And I got one of my state championship titles while working with him. Uh, about him, he is, a, he is an excellent coach as well as a very good player. His knowledge in chess is <clears throat> very wide as well as deep. And uh, he, he is a person who has inspired me in many ways. So working with him was very instructive as well as enjoyable for me. And I hope you guys would also have a great time working with him. So that was my uh, uh, student Sanjay Espillai gave me a testimonial. Uh, I, I worked with him uh, in 2017, 18 and 19. So because of COVID, I'm no longer working with him right now. So I have a taught over 2,155 students worldwide. Uh, I'm a coach in uh, various platforms and Udemy as well. So I've, uh, I'm, I call myself a digital chess coach these days. So why am I launching this digital chess internship program? The main reason is that, you know, 50% uh, 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 of the students do not know how to get better at chess. They, they love to play online chess, which is not enough to improve their game. And I observed that 70% of the students learn but do not practice regularly. 80% of the students do not implement what they have learned when, while playing tournaments. And 20% of the students who implement and learn but do not get enough guidance from their coaches or, or instructors. So basically, these are some of the challenges which I faced when I when start learning chess. But uh, I don't want uh, future generation to go through this uh, 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 you know, uh, difficulty. So this internship program is, uh, you know, aimed at giving the basic foundation uh, of chess in uh, eight weeks so that you can, you can build on that foundation. I mean, uh, most of us know chess, but uh, not scientifically. We, are, we don't study chess scientifically enough. So I'm giving you a scientific base to how to learn chess. So the, uh, I mean, uh, just, uh, you know, learning to move the, move the pieces is not enough. So learning and then implementing is everything. So guidance and mentorship from my side, I expect responsibility, accountability and commitment from my students and uh, implementation of what you have learned uh, uh, by practicing uh, with in friendly games and tournaments. And uh, I, I plan to conduct a weekend tournaments one year, once you get better at chess so that you can practice and uh, you know enhance your knowledge so this is how the internship program is structured uh, there's a fee to join the program so this time i'm only taking 50 people in and uh, it will be an eight weeks program and uh, classes will be four hours per week there will be two sessions so each session will have two uh, two hours of duration and uh, alternative weeks will have will have question and answer and mentorship session where you can ask your doubts and you can ask and clear your doubts. So that will be two hours per two weeks. So every two weeks, uh, uh, I will conduct this uh, mentorship program. And uh, I'll give you a bonus lecture of 30 minutes as well. So the total hours will be 40 hours plus 30 minutes bonus. So what you need for this internship program, um, uh, I would expect you to have a good internet connection, a laptop. Um, I, I, I don't recommend mobile at all. I mean, uh, that is a big no-no. Uh, I want you to have a laptop or a desktop device. And uh, this is a desirable, uh, uh, if you have a chess base or Fritz to analyze your games, that is, a, that is very good. If, even if you don't have, uh, or if you can't afford to buy it, that is okay. But this is a must have, you need to have a chessboard at home. Then uh, design a desire to learn chess by practicing it. That is also important. Just by attending my program uh, will not uh, be enough. I want you to practice it as well. So I'll be giving you assignments for you to work out in that entire week. So I want you to spend at least five to seven hours per week to complete the assignments and practice. 
So there is no points for completing your assignment. This is only for your self uh, improvement. I'm giving you this assignment program. And uh, I'll, I'll clear the doubts in the next uh, session. I will uh, give you the results so that you can practice it more and more uh, you know, time so that you can bet get better at, at chess. And uh, as I told you before, I, I, this is what I want. I want commitment and discipline from your side. So let me discuss the curriculum uh, of this program with you. Road to Chess Mastery is what I've named it. Uh, so curriculum is like this. Introduction to chess, which is the basics. Uh, general opening theory will be covered. Type of middle game combinations and tactics will be covered. End game technique will be covered. Classic game analysis will be covered. Psychological preparation will be covered. That is a bonus lecture which I'm going, to, which I'll be giving you after the end of uh, all this, all the week sessions. Uh, how to uh, win a one game? How to be competitive in chess? Uh, you know that is also very important. I mean, uh, chess is a mind game, so you need to be mentally sharp to win a competitive game but if it is if it is for a friendly tournament then it is not uh, needed but if you are uh, planning to take up chess uh, seriously and play tournaments then this will be uh, uh, this uh, this lecture will be important for you uh, so chess can be uh, divided into five segments first is uh, understanding the rules of the game so without under, if you don't understand the rules, if you don't know the rules fully, then you can't enjoy this game. It's like, as I told you the metaphor before, if you're playing football or cricket or any other sport, if you don't understand all the rules of the game, you can't, you can't uh, you know, uh, uh, improve on the game and you can get better at it. So understanding the rules is number one. So next is uh, chess is divided into three uh, segments. One is opening theory, the initial phase of the game. Second is the middle game. That is a tactics and strategy part. Uh, uh, and the, next, the last phase, the final phase is called the end game where most of the pieces would be exchanged off. Uh, and uh, you have few pieces and then you have to outfit your opponent to win the game. Some of the games will be completed, will be finished in the middle game itself and few games will be transposed into the end game. So end game knowledge is also very important. Uh, uh, and uh, middle game is where all the fun happens. And uh, finally, we need to, uh, you know, go through and study the classical games played by uh, great masters. Um, so we had to analyze some of the classical games to understand how they might have handled the position. And a little bit of psychology is also important. So the week wise uh, curriculum is like this. So the rules of the game, um, once you are registered for this program, I'll give you a recorded session of the rules of the game. It, uh, it will be uploaded in our learning portal. So you can go there and watch the lecture multiple times to understand the rules of the game. Because um, you know, before you, we start the program, I want you, all of you to be thorough with the rules of the game. Second, uh, opening theory. So for week one, I'll start with uh, the basic elementary mates, which I'll discuss later. Uh, opening theory will be uh, covered in week one and week two. Middle game will be covered in week three, week four, and week five. End game will be covered in week six and week seven. And classical game analysis and preparation will be covered in week eight. This is how I structured my program. So introduction to chess basics, it will be a, a two hour uh, session. Uh, the recording will be available on learning portal for those who have registered for the internship. So this is a chess introduction. Uh, you know, how pieces, what is a chess board, uh, et cetera, will be covered. So I'll just tell you what I'm going to cover in that. Uh, I'll be covering what is chess men, what is a chess board, uh, relative value of the chess men. Like, you know, this is a chess board where you have, you know, uh, uh, eight columns and eight rows and uh, how the pieces are arranged, uh, how to move your pieces, how to move rook, bishop, queen, knight, pawn, and king. Um, then I will cover the chess notations. Uh, this is called a chess language, how you speak in chess language. So that will be covered. Uh, castling, uh, pawn promotion, what is, uh, you know, uh, how to promote a pawn. Uh, to uh, various uh, you know higher level pieces like queen bishop uh, rook etc the pawn promotion will be covered and pass on the special move called and pass on will be covered checking the king what is a check how to get out of check and what is a checkmate all these uh, will be covered so just an example i'll tell you the what is the rules of castling for example this is how i'll be teaching you the king moves two 
two spaces and the rook goes to the other side so castling is like you know there are different rules of castling so you have to other to to these rules while you castle so that is why it is very important to understand the rules before you start a game so it must be the king's first move one king's moves king moves you lose your uh, right to castle uh, it must be the rook's first move as well once you rook, rook moves you will lose your ability to castle on that side you cannot castle while in a check you cannot castle into a check you cannot castle through a check and uh, uh, you need to have uh, no pieces should be there in between the uh, king and the rook so you can castle on the king side this is called the king side castling and you can castle on the queen side this is called and which is called the queen side castling so these are the rules of castling so this is just an example i told you so which I, these all these all things will be covered in my recorded session once you uh, pay for this program and enroll for this program this will be available for you right so <clears throat> exchanging the pieces touch move uh, illegal move how a game is won how a game is drawn so for example here uh, this in this position uh, bishop takes knight bishop takes bishop uh, uh, is a move is it is called a capture this bishop is take can take this bishop so chess is a turn based game right so once and you cannot skip your turn so this bishop takes this bishop and then next position the knight takes uh, you know uh, this knight so uh, all these uh, things will be covered uh, exchange pieces like a pro when to exchange pieces um, how to exchange pieces because uh, pieces there is a there's a method to exchange pieces if for example a uh, rook is a higher valued piece than a knight or a bishop so when you are trading your knight or a bishop with a with a with a rook uh, and it is called you know you are losing an exchange and uh, what is the goal of an exchange when you cap capture an exchange pieces what are the goals of the exchange what are the good tips for exchanging pieces exchanging pieces in the middle game and how to trans uh, transpose into a end game in a favorable way sometimes you know in the middle game you can transpose mm -hmm. it to an end game uh, in a very favorable method so uh, that is also very important so once you are up, up in a material if you have an extra pawn or extra piece uh, it is advisable to you know exchange of all the pieces and go to the end game so that you can win easily so let us start this is where uh, the uh, you know the main thing starts so this is the week one program so uh, in week one i'll be uh, telling you about the introduction to chess pa uh, chess part 2 uh, that part one will be covered in the uh, recorded session this is a part 2 so it will be a 120 minute session plus a mentorship session will be covered in that week okay so i'll cover the elementary mates how to mate with two rooks how to mate with the queen how to mate with one rook how to mate with two bishops how, how to mate with a king how to uh, uh, you know there are certain positions where two knights a plus king can checkmate a, a lone king you know i will tell you that and uh, how to checkmate with the bishop and knight versus king so in this position you have this is called a ladder mate position where uh, the king is cornered in the back rank and the next move next uh, is uh, next move is ch uh, checkmate next move uh, rook a8 is checkmate so i'll be covering all this so next i'll be covering some simple checkmate pro uh, uh, problems like you know mate in one move mate in two moves mate in three moves all these things are important to understand chess and also to improve your tactical uh, vision so in this position Uh, this is a mate in one position okay in uh, next one move it is checkmate if you can find it you, uh, i will give you one second uh, five seconds to find it otherwise i will tell you starting from now all right the the, the solution to this problem is that bishop to f3 is a checkmate because uh, the rook cannot block this check because of this uh, rook Uh, is checking the king 
So bishop f3 is a checkmate. So that is a one more checkmate, which is an example. And like this, various examples will be covered and I'll ask you to solve mate in one move. And then uh, once you get better at it, I'll ask you to solve mate in two moves and then mate in three moves, etc. Then uh, uh, I will give you exercise to solve at home, uh, which, will, uh, which we will discuss in the next class. In week two, I will cover general opening theory. It will be a two session uh, uh, per week program. Uh, session will be, one will be 120 minutes, session two will be uh, 120 minutes. In this, I will cover the importance of peace development, uh, importance of a center, uh, uh, importance of castling, when to develop your queen. So you cannot develop your queen in the middle, in the opening, it is not a good idea. Uh, do not play the same piece twice in the opening. Uh, why, why you should not play it uh, twice? Play the same piece twi twice in the opening. How many pawn moves should we make in the opening, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. All these basic ideas will be covered. So, for example, uh, uh, in a sample game here, uh, this is the uh, uh, you know one move checkmate. A queen d8 to h4 is checkmate because uh, king cannot move. So, when if you move your uh, pawns in. Uh, which is guarding your king in the initially, uh, there's a chance that you might get checkmated uh, in two or three moves. Uh, so we had to avoid all those traps. So some of the chess traps will be discussed uh, in, uh, in this lecture. Then again, there'll be exercise. I'll give you some exercises to, to solve at home. And uh, moving to week three, uh, typical middle game combinations. This is where, the, again, the fun starts. The middle game is fun it's, uh, because tactics is a soul, uh, you know, the soul of chess. And uh, here uh, we have to, in the middle game, we have to uh, look into various tactics and uh, strategy as well. So in the first session, I will cover how to improve your game. You have to develop excellent understanding to the middle game positions and tactics. So learn the basic concepts like a pin, a night fork, a double attack, a skewer, a back rank. All right. So these, this is actually called a pin. Here the position which I've shown you as an example. This, this bishop is pinning this knight. If you move this bishop, uh, the, sorry, move this knight, the bishop will take the queen. So this is called a pin, right? So like that, there are various concepts which we will discuss in the first uh, lecture. So uh, next I will give you an exercise because uh, I don't want you to stress too much. In, and in week four, we'll continue with uh, the middle game uh, combination and tactics. Uh, I'll have uh, session one of 120 minutes, session two, uh, two sessions will be there. We'll discuss the discovered attack, discovery check, decoy, destroying the defender, deflection, etc. Here uh, I'm giving you an example of uh, a decoy where uh, in this position, if you observe closely, a uh, bishop from here is checking and sacrificing itself on f7 and checking this king. And the king has to take it. There's no other way king can uh, escape to other uh, position because um, uh, you, he cannot move to this square because bishop is there occupied in the square. He cannot move to this square because the queen uh, is checking. So he has to take it and when king takes the bishop, he will lose the queen. Queen takes uh, d8 and black loses the queen and he loses the game. So all these tactics will be, uh, you know, uh, discussed. Decoy, discovered attack, discover, uh, discovered check, discovered attack, destroying the defender, deflection, etc. will be uh, discussed. Uh, in the next session, this uh, second session, I will discuss overloaded piece line opening and line closing, passed upon x-rays and windmills. So here I've given an example of a passed upon. What is a passed upon? Passed upon is a pawn which has got, uh, you know, no other pawn to stop it or block it. So this is passed. This pawn is passed and it can reach, if it reaches to the eight rank, it can convert it, uh, it can promote itself into any piece it likes. So passed pawn is an advantage. People you know, as a chess player, we should, uh, you know, uh, uh, aim for a pass, pass, getting a passed pawn. Next, uh, I'll give you some exercises as well. In week five, we will uh, continue with the middle game uh, combination and tactics, part three. Uh, there'll be a one session of 120 minutes and a mentorship session of uh, 120 minutes. Here, uh, we'll discuss uh, what is a Shuzhuang, the intermediate move 
uh, what is a draw by repetition and what is a stalemate and what is a smothered mate. In this position, I've given an example of a smothered mate where smothered mate is delivered by uh, a knight where uh, the king cannot move, it is blocked by its own pieces. And this is an example of a smothered mate. So we'll all learn all these con concepts in this lecture. Again, I'll give you an exercise of, there'll be a mentorship uh, question and answer session as well in the same week where you can ask me questions and doubts and I'll clear your doubts. So it will be a two way interactive session. Next uh, week six, uh, the end game, we'll start the, the middle game tactics are over. Now we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, start the end game. And this, this will be two parts. The part one uh, is uh, there'll be two sessions. 120 minutes each. So we will cover uh, the basic, the end game is reached uh, uh, if all the pieces, most of the pieces, pieces are captured in the middle game and uh, very few pieces are left on the chessboard. So end game is itself is a vast area and there are different types of end games as well. Uh, so um, this is an example of a king and pawn end game. The king and pawn endings are, again, you know, there are a lot of past concepts of king and pawn ending. There, there's a concept called concept of opposition. There's a burger's rule of, rule of the square. Uh, the king behind pawns, king in, in front of pawns, all these concepts should be learned. Uh, so uh, next session we learn rook pawn exception. The king against connected past pawns. Uh, king against disconnected past pawns. This is an example of a king against disconnected past pawns. These pawns are not connected. Ending with several pawns, the concept of triangulation. So here, uh, if you look at this position, uh, uh, if white moves, which is, which is my white's move, it, uh, white will win because, uh, you know, pawn will, uh, you can push this pawn and this king cannot stop these two pawns from promoting to a queen. So you can capture one pawn, but at least one pawn will be promoted. So I will uh, discuss all this. And uh, next, I will tell you what this is in, in a nutshell. Uh, <clears throat> this is a typical end game. So we have rook pawn endings or uh, the exception of uh, uh, rules. And there are rules of defending. There are rules of key squares. So here uh, in this position, we can see that if white pushes this pawn here, uh, black has to capture, then this pawn will go on to queen. So all these tricks and traps will be discussed. This is the rule of the square uh, where, you know, this, this pawn uh, is, can, can be captured if, uh, by the black king if it is inside this square. So for example, if uh, 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 white plays a4, king can go here, here, uh, King has to move uh, one king, king can only move one square, right? So a4, king uh, f3, f5, king e4, a6, king uh, d5, a7, king c6, and then it promotes. So the, this king should have been inside this uh, square if he has to capture this pawn. That is the basic idea of the square rule. So then I'll give you some exercises to solve, and then we go to week seven. Week seven, again, we continue with the end game uh, part two and uh, there'll be a mentorship session as well. So there'll be three sessions in this, in this week. So we'll start with a queen against advanced pawn. Uh, so this is an example of a queen against advanced pawn. Next move, it is checkmate. Uh, sorry, the, the, uh, the pawn will be promoted to a queen. So how to stop this? There's a way to stop this um, and uh, you know, white can win this game. Uh, queen versus rook, uh, bishop versus pawn and king, bishop versus pawn versus bishop, king king and pawn versus king. All these different uh, permutations and scenarios will be discussed. So all these, uh, uh, you know, deserve separate study. You know, you cannot generalize this. So all these scenarios has to be discussed separately. The next session we'll uh, discuss uh, king and king and pawn versus king. Knight versus king and pawn, rook versus pawn, rook and pawn, end game, which is the, uh, this is a very important uh, principle, Philidor's drawn position. This is depicted here where this position is a draw, even though white has got an extra pawn, this, this can be a, this is a drawn position. Philidor uh, 
thank you duncan philidor who which who is the you know 16th century chess master uh, discovered an idea to draw this game so if you don't know philidor's idea you, you might even lose this lose this end game so if you don't know this idea how to uh, uh, you know uh, draw this game using philidor's method then it is a matter of how to solve how to save half a point then uh, lucerne's winning position uh, lucerne's winning position this is called lucerne's winning position uh, this is the this is the position uh, you have to move your rooks in such a manner and maneuver it in such a manner you can win the game so all these are uh, different tactics and techniques will be discovered uh, discussed in 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 detail and all these are basic rules chess is a vast ocean and uh, eight weeks or eight years or 80 years or 800 years is not enough to learn the entire chess uh, uh, lessons because you know the number of permutations and combinations in chess is 10 to the power of 40. Uh, uh, I mean including the legal positions, legal position, uh, legal sorry legal positions 10 to the power of 40 and if you compare with the number of atoms in the universe, it is 10 to the power of 80. So that is how vast chess is and the possibilities of chess is. That is, a, that is why I call chess as an infinite game. So, but uh, in eight weeks, you will get a foundation of chess. All these are big foundations where you can build uh, an entire uh, 50 story or 100 story or 200 story building on top of it. But if your foundation is not uh, strong, you won't be able to build uh, a you know uh, a, a, a big structure on top of it, right? So you have to have the foundation strong. This is a program to make your foundation strong, so you can play a, a decent game of chess, and you can be stronger, and that use yeah, that foundation to get better at chess in your uh, in your life. There'll be exercise as well. In the week eight, uh, since we have studied all the basics of chess, now we have come to the very uh, vague end of our program. Uh, here we'll study the classical games played by uh, you know uh, the, the grandmasters and the people who have inv uh, you know um, invented ideas in chess over the last 200, 300 years. And then we'll we will uh, study how to analyze your own games, and I will give you a bonus lecture uh, of 30 minutes as well. So these are the world champions. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll play some of the great, great games of these great uh, world uh, great, great masters. So uh, uh, this is Frank A. Duncan Philidor, uh, who is a 16th century master. There was no chess championship during that time but uh, I consider him as one of the pioneers of chess. Uh, this is Paul M Murphy, who is uh, the unofficial world champion and the pride and sorrow of chess. He was a chess genius. I'll tell you his story later. He is a, uh, he's an American and I think he's one of the greatest chess players of all time. He defeated uh, almost all players uh, in the world, especially in Europe. And uh, only, only very few players were managed, were managed to beat him. And he retired from chess at a very young age. And it is a sorry state that you know, he had to uh, leave chess at a very young age. So, but his games are still very modern. And I advise everyone who is my, who is my student uh, or who is enthusiastic about learning chess to learn the games of uh, the great Paul Murphy. This is William Stennis, the first official world chess champion. This is uh, Iman, the great Emmanuel Lasker of Germany. Uh, uh, Stennis is from Austria. Uh, this is uh, the great Cuban Joe's Roll Capablanca, the third world chess champion. This is the first Russian champion, uh, Alexander Alexandrovich Alekhain. This is uh, Max Yu of Holland, the uh, fifth champion, the sixth champion, uh, Michael Botwinik of uh, Soviet Union. This is Wesley Smyslov of Soviet, Soviet Union. This is the great magician from uh, Riga, the uh, great Michael Tal. This is Tigran uh, Petroshian. This is Boris Spassky, uh, uh, the great Soviet masters, uh, starting with Botvinnik, Smyslov, Tal, Petroshian, and Spassky. And this is the great uh, American Bobby Fischer. You must have heard about him. Uh, he's a very famous personality. He defeated uh, the Soviet school of chess single-handedly to win 
the world title uh, and uh, you know the first person to take the title to the west after the soviet domination again uh, he you know disappeared from chess like paul murphy and uh, from uh, and he refused to play world uh, uh, championship match with anatoly karpov and uh, anatoly karpov won the title in 1975 and he was champion until 1985 uh, when uh, gary kasparov the great gary kasparov uh, defeated him in a match in 1985 then their match uh games were the first uh, collection of games i've received from my father as a gift and which uh, started my chess journey this is uh, uh vladimir borisovich kramnik who defeated uh, gary kasparov in a match and won the title in 2000 and this is our own uh, uh vishwanath anand uh, who defeated uh, vladimir kramnik in 2007 to become the world uh, chess champion and uh, this is the current champion uh, magnus carlsen who defeated uh, Anand in 2012, eight years ago, to win the uh, world title. So we will discuss some of a uh, few selected games of these great masters. Um, so next, uh, in next next lecture, I will uh, tell you about is it essential to analyze your why is it essential to analyze it? Your your analyze your own games because your games are gems. I mean, that is the only data you have, you must have heard that data is gold. Uh, these days, uh, you know, data is considered as gold. So your own games are gold for you. So you can analyze your games where you have done mistakes and where you can improve improve in the next uh, next game next game when you play the same uh, structure and what kind of thought process you were going through and how to rectify it and become a better player so one should learn to annotate your games annotation means you uh, comment on each move and uh, see if there is a better move or worse move yeah, have you have you made a blunder or a mistake so that you learn from what you have played so correct your mistakes and uh, keep a database of uh, of your games in a notebook or probably in a in a chess software so that you can uh, use it later all right so i'll i'll teach you how to do that next uh, uh, i'll give you a bonus lecture this is very important uh, learning chess is one thing but uh, you need to have a competitive personality if you want to succeed in chess i mean uh, chess is about chess is a war game and it is all it is about outwitting your opponent uh, in many ways than one to win the game not only in the chess board uh it it could be done in psychologically uh, as well you know you have to give an impression that you are confident uh, you know uh, and you are better prepared prepared for the game how to prepare for an opponent all those things matters so in a 30 minute uh, 30 to 45 minutes lecture i will tell you how to develop a competitive personality in, even if you are uh, uh, writing a competitive exam like an entrance exam for your engineering or medicine or for uh, civil service it will come in handy for you what you will achieve from this program so as i told you before foundation and basic concept of chess you can build this knowledge to increase your chess strength if you if you know a little bit about chess and uh, as i discussed before i will uh, tell uh, you know cover elementary maze general opening theory middle game combinations end game techniques etc and also how to develop competitive personality and you will be part of a chess community so the basic one of the one of the reasons is that you know i will be forming a whatsapp group and also a, a, a facebook community as well we and you can use those community to uh, exchange ideas exchange books uh, exchange knowledge and find a playing partner for yourself so how to join this internship program right so um you can join today uh, with an enrollment fee uh, and uh, uh, there'll be you know live coaching every week uh, i'll start in september right after onam and uh, i'll give you assignments and exercises you will also get a recording of the live coaching so that you can watch uh, later so if you even if you miss a class this uh, you know you don't have to worry uh you can watch the recorded session then you can watch it multiple times as much as you want until you get the concepts right so the cost of uh, joining this just just internship program so originally the cost the actual cost of this program is 10000 rupees because i charge uh 
I think it is more than 10,000 rupees. Actually, you know, I charge a minimum of 1000 rupees per hour and I'm giving you 40, 40 hours of my time. Uh, and that too, uh, uh, in a, in, in a live lecture, it is not recorded section. Only the rules of the game will be, I'll be giving you in recorded format, uh, else it will be a live lecture. So 40 hours of uh, lecture I'll be giving you, but for people who have attended my live webinar, I'm giving it for, uh, two triple nine and you save uh, 7,000 rupees, uh, in this live webinar. So, um, that means I'm just giving it for 75 rupees per hour. And I'm only taking uh, 50 students per batch. And uh, you know that is the cap I want to keep, uh, 50 students per batch. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be starting it in the next uh, two weeks time. So I hope you have understood uh, the basics of it. And uh, these are some of the FAQs, uh, some of my, uh, uh, some of the webinars which I've taken earlier have asked me. So live coaching classes will start on September 3rd uh, after Onam uh, at 7 p.m. India time. Then if there is a change in this date, I will, I will let you know. Once you register for this program, you will get access to the uh, recorded session, which I'll be uploading tomorrow. Within two days, you will get an access. Uh, so live coaching classes and mentorship session, video recordings will be given to you who cannot attend it live. Live coaching classes uh, every Sunday or Wednesday that can be changed uh, based on uh, uh, the, the feedback from your side. So I've decided that I, you know every Sunday, I'll, I will have a session at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on Wednesday at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And there will be a private Facebook group and a WhatsApp group for interns to help each other out to network and find a playing partner. So uh, I've come to a very end of uh, this uh, program and uh, I'll take uh, question, questions from you. Uh, if you have any questions. So you can ask your questions uh, in, in chat and I, I can answer your questions. So hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, live session. So uh, keep asking your questions and then um, uh, I will be glad to answer your questions in next uh, next uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Yes, so um, these are the uh, payment uh, you can uh, join for two, two triple nine. Um, two triple nine rupees, or uh, you can um, uh, join for triple nine and block your seat, uh, block your seat uh, as well. So this uh, this this is for this webinar only. So. I would urge you to, you know, avail this opportunity to learn chess uh, at uh, this, uh, you know, very, very affordable uh, cost.
So Sumitra is asking again, how I, uh, how we can have to learn? I mean, I don't understand your question. Against artificial intelligence, how we have to learn? I don't understand. I mean, we are not using any artificial intelligence here. I'm actually teaching you chess. So these are the joining fees. Uh, this is a, this is be a live internship program where I'll be teaching you chess through Zoom uh, meetings, not artificial artificial intelligence of any other uh, automata or automata or bot program here. So I won't be using any engines. Uh, I'll be just sharing my knowledge with you, which I have accumulated over the years. Um, we'll use uh, engines and uh, in database just to assist us. Uh, and I'm a live person who will be teaching the, this program to you. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel to ask. So one thing we, uh, we are worried about is the screen time. So screen time, uh, I see everyone is actually, you know, um, I'm, I'm working, so I, I work till 5, 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And I think uh, every, uh, most of the children and the working professionals are engaged at uh, until 6 o'clock or 6.30. So I thought, you know, six, 7 o'clock is an optimum time for everyone to attend the uh, live program and it's only twice a week right uh, in some weeks we have only once one webinar only and uh, in some weeks there'll be three but uh, we can we can actually you know adjust that i'm flexible uh, regarding that So uh, this is this is this is a you know a one-time program for you, for you to learn chess. Uh, so if you are really interested in learning chess, if you want your children to learn chess, I would urge you to uh, make a payment today itself. And uh, this uh, program is valid only. Uh, this this amount is only valid till this webinar. And in next webinar, I'm going to have a different pricing. So it is up to you if you want to you know, uh, avail this program at this price. And uh, as I told you, this is a 40 hour uh, program, uh, which I'll be giving you an interactive training uh, through Zoom. So take action uh, and uh, I will give, I've given you the, the payment link and uh, it is all valid for next 24 hours. You can uh, make payment next 24 hours and it expires uh, uh, tomorrow at uh, this time. So if, uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to wind up uh, this meeting. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. So how the problem solving skills will improve while we play chess? Individual attention, uh, if I have 50 students, uh, do, do you think that uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is possible, uh, Sumitra? Uh, you tell me, uh, if I am, uh, you are in my seat and if you have 50 students, how will you give individual attention uh, through Zoom meeting? So what I'll do is I will be giving them problems to solve and I will give them solutions how to solve the problem. And uh, then we, we have to practice at home. So this program is, will give you a base foundation and base how to uh, learn chess scientifically, right? So that is what the intention is. And uh, as I've explained in the webinar, all the concepts, the, uh, the scientific concepts of chess, which I've learned over the years, that is just, uh, you know, the basics of it. The chess is a vast ocean. Even Magnus Carlsen, Vishwanathan Anand or Gary Kasparov couldn't master chess. So mastering chess is, uh, you know, is not possible. Even the grandmasters, even the, the greatest of grandmasters cannot master the game. It is like music, right? Uh, uh, music cannot be mastered. Uh, you are 
you can only reach up to a level. It is a vast, vast ocean. So I'm giving you a foundation uh, because most of us, what we do is we just uh, learn the rules of the game and we start to play chess and we don't know how to mate with two bishops, how to mate with a bishop and a knight. What is the rule of castling? And uh, there, is there a 15 rule rule or, or not? All these things are uh, not, uh, you know, most of the players are not aware of. So I will mean, let you know, I will make you aware of all the rules of the game uh, so that you can enjoy the game uh, uh, in, a, in a good manner. Also take it to the next level as well if you want to become a professional player. So I have another program for that as well. Those who are in the intermediate stage where uh, I will help them to reach to the 2000 yellow rating. That's another story for, for that is an advanced concept. So if you don't know the basic concept, how can you learn the advanced concepts, right? So we have to start from the basics, understand the concepts. All these things are basic, basic, basic concepts. And from there, you will move on to the next level. And from there again, you have to move, move to the next level. That like that, how, how, uh, how it is. Now that is not possible, uh, uh, you know, the class time uh, is fixed and uh, the number of classes cannot, because it might go, it will go to six months. I mean, uh, that, that won't work for both of both of us. Uh, so it is a two months program. In two months, I believe that it is possible for someone who is dedicated to chess to learn chess. I'm just asking you, you to dedicate yourself at least four hours or five hours per week. And if you want to learn even any, anything for that matter, you have to dedicate at least four to five hours per uh, per week. The evaluation process is basically like, you know, I have a eight hours mentorship program, like every two weeks, I will have a mentorship session and question, question and answer session. And uh, I will, you know, interact with the uh, crowd. Uh, so that way, uh, you you will you see basically in any uh, class uh, Sumitra, even if you are learning mathematics, nobody can spoon feed, spoon feed you, right? Can we can be anything can be spoon fed? No, I can make you understand the basic concept. For it is for the children or the student or anybody for that matter to practice it. I will show you the way. You have to walk the way, right? So that is that is how it is. You have to take that. That is why I said multiple times that I, I expect dedication and commitment and practice from your end. I hope that answers you answer your question. So any more questions, I'll be winding up in next five minutes. Uh, the link uh, I will send to you uh, through Messenger and uh, you can take a decision until uh, I'll, I'll give you 24 hours to take a decision on this. So if you have any more questions, I'll be free to answer these questions. I'll be free to take these questions. Demo class is what I have given you. So we, once you play the program, you will get a demo, a demo session, a recorded session in the learning portal. Tomorrow, uh, if you enroll for this program. So as I said before, we'll be covering the rules of the game in the demo class, uh, which, uh, which is uh, a recorded format uh, and which will be uploaded in the uh, learning portal. So I think there's, there are no more questions. So you think about it and uh, take a decision. Uh, this is uh, one of the, uh, you know, um, I have a 30, 35 years of experience uh, in learning chess and understanding chess and, and also playing in competitive chess and also uh, training uh, my students as well. So it is, uh, uh, it is a very good offer for you. So uh, you know, think about it and take a decision. Uh, meanwhile, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. Yes, I told you multiple times, Sumitra, you'll be a, uh, there'll be a platform in, uh, uh, we'll, we'll create a Facebook group and all, as well as a WhatsApp group uh, as well. I already have a group actually. All right, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your time and for attending this webinar. I immensely enjoyed explaining these slides uh, with you and uh, I hope you hope to see you in this program 
in the next four in next two weeks and uh, i wish you uh, all the best and uh, a very good night bye bye